In this video, we're going to take a look at what it means for a set of vectors to span R2. So we're going to work with the vectors V1 and V2. So there's two vectors. V1 is the vector 1, 1. V2 is the vector 1, negative 2. And we're asking ourselves, does this set of vectors, so the collection of both these vectors, does it span the space R2? So what does it mean for something to span R2? That means that we should be able to write any arbitrary element of R2. So here I'm picking an arbitrary element from R2, just this generic vector a, b. And what we're really being asked is can we write v1 and v2, can we weight them to yield the vector a, b? So can I write any vector I choose, a, b, as a weighted combination of v1 and v2? That's what it means to span R2 if any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of v1 and v2. We could also write this like this, right? So here's kind of the vector formulation of this equation. Here's more of the matrix formulation of this equation. Is it possible for me to find some unknowns, x1 and x2, to make this equation true for any values of a and b? So if I wanted to solve for x1 and x2 to see if this system of equations actually has a solution, we can go ahead and form the augmented matrix. So I've formed the augmented matrix. And now we can do row operations to solve for x1 and x2 to see if it is possible to write this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's let E2, equation 2, equal equation 2 minus equation 1. So equation 1 is going to be unchanged. Equation 2 will have a 0 here because 1 minus 1 is 0. And negative 2 minus a negative 1 is a negative 3. And then B minus A is B minus A. So there we have that. And then if I let E2 equal a negative 132, multiply every quantity by a negative third, equation 1 will be unchanged. 0 times a third is still a third. A negative 3 times a negative a third is 1. And then we have A minus B, or B minus A times a negative 1 third. The sign changes, so that turns into A minus B over 3. And then finally, let's go ahead and let E1, equation 1, equal equation 1 minus equation 2. Let's go ahead and try to get a 0 right there. So if we do this, equation 2 remains unchanged, but equation 1 in the first entry will be 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then A minus the quantity A minus B over 3. So I have done a few row operations to manipulate this augmented matrix. And now by looking at this, it's very easy to see that x1 is equal to a times the quantity a minus b over 3. And x2 is equal to a minus b over 3. So there, I've been able to find numbers x1 and x2 that make this equation true for any value of a, b that I want to choose. So remember, we've chosen this arbitrary element from R2. And I've been able to find these coefficients that make this equation true for any arbitrary element from R2. So, yes, these vectors do span R2. So let's continue with just a little example here. So, just to make it concrete, we did it generally. But as a for exa example, if I chose the vector 4, negative 2, I could go ahead and compute what x1 and x2 are based on the solution we just found. x1 would be 4 minus the quantity... 4 minus a minus 2 over 3, which is 4 minus 6 over 3, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. Similarly, we could compute x2. It is 4 minus a minus 2 over 3, which is 6 over 3, which is 2. So this says that I should be able to take 2 times v1 plus 2 times v2. If we do the math on that, we have 2, 2, and 2, negative 4, which if we add up is 4, negative 2, which is indeed equal to a, b. So this is just a concrete example that shows no matter what vector we choose from R2, we can always compute x1 and x2 such that the linear combination of v1 and v2 yields a, b.